Dredef, Healthcare Stories. Mary Smith is being interviewed at the Ed Roberts campus in Berkeley, California. My disability was present at birth. Um, the medical term is arthrogryposis multiple congenitive. Basically what it means is that it impacts all four extremities. You know, I have um, club hands, club feet when I was born. Still have them. <laughs> and uh, and basically in, in past my muscle groups. Um, I have several muscle groups that don't work hardly at all. I went in for my regular screening mammogram. The procedure went well, you know. I've done a lot of work with a mammography technologist to start with about how to position women with disabilities as they come in for for their exam. So, you know, they're learning that process slowly. <laughs> And uh, and so I went through that particular procedure fine uh, while I was waiting to see if they got what all they needed. They came back and said that they had found something on my right breast, so they wanted to do further diagnostic workup on that. So that same day, I went back into the um, suite and they did a diagnostic mammogram and then they wanted to do an ultrasound of the breast. Ideally when they do the ultrasound they want you to be lying on a table slash gurney. Uh, looking at the gurney I knew that I was not going to be able to transfer myself onto it because it was just too high. and. Uh, I can do my own transfers, but anything over 21 inches is from the top to the floor is just too too hard for me to do, and I can't do it. So uh, I told that to the technician, and uh, they didn't have the capability right on that same day to do the mammogram, but she thought maybe if I could lean back in my chair a little bit, maybe they would be able to get it. So they went ahead and did the ultrasound, but as she um, suspected, it didn't come out clear enough to be helpful in the diagnostic process. So they asked me to come back, you know, at, at another time. And as I was sitting with the um, scheduler, to, re, um, to set up that appointment, I said, you know, I will need assistance in, in the transfer to a table. And the scheduler said, oh, no problem, no problem. We've just instituted a lift team um, protocol here at the center, and for those who have difficulties, we'll just get a lift team here for you. And I said, well, I want you to relay to them that what I need is someone to actually physically or, you know, lift me because I cannot do any of the transfer myself. Oh, no problem, no problem. So I, I think about a week or two later, I, I come back for that follow-up uh, ultrasound and uh, as the schedule had indicated, yes, there was a lift team there, which consisted of one individual and a piece of equipment. The piece of equipment looked like it was a stand-up table, um, which is a, another piece of medical equipment that is used to help people who can't stand to stand. And, uh, and I said, Will that get me high enough to go under the table? Oh yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. And so I stand on the little platform, and it, the platform is like only about a half inch off the ground. And I said, now does this lift me? Is there a, a mechanical uh, motor that lifts me up that extra two, three inches? Oh, it's going to be fine, so, and I said, okay. As I suspected, my butt would not, was not sitting on the platform. It was hitting the side of the gurney. 
And I said, now what? <laughs> uh, well, if you can just raise your stand a little taller. And I said, that's, I told you folks, this was my problem. <laughs> and uh, so uh, what's going to happen? Oh, we'll take care of it. And I just, I became very frustrated because I had come to the appointment hoping to be a patient, not having to be a director of placing me here and there. And so suddenly I found myself having to switch out of that being, being a patient and being worried about my breast. I was now suddenly worried about how am I going to get onto this gurney with people who have no clue in moments like that. I did not feel it, I was allowed to be able to really be nervous, be angry, and all of that. And so it's stuffing down those feelings, and, um, and that hurts a lot. So, you know, so I think a lot of it is just, um, too many of us have had to do that over the years. Hmm. I didn't realize I was going to go here. And then the next step was I then had to have a consultation with an oncologist surgeon, breast oncologist surgeon. Um, and I went to her office, and it was again accessible, very nice. Uh, and she even had a high low. Uh, t exam table, which I was so thankful for, so that I could do my own transfer. At that point, she said that um, she wanted to do the biopsy, but she thought it would be better if I had it in outpatient surgery. And I said, y it can't be done over at the breast center because that was my understanding that it was usually done. Uh, right at the breast center. And she said, well, I think it would just be much easier on you. And I said, well, I don't do well on operating tables. Uh, I, it causes a lot of stress to my back and pain level. And she said, well, we'll take care of that. And I, and, uh, I said, and I still would prefer um, local an anesthesia. And she said, well, we'll have to talk about that. And I said, no, we'll, I'll have local anesthesia, you know, uh, because I, I thought for this procedure that it was my understanding that that was all that was going to be needed. I first had to go back to the breast center because they had to do another procedure that involved the mammography machine. It was... Uh, another mammogram where they inserted wires into the breast that locate the areas that they want to um, take out for biopsy. And then under usual circumstances, the, the patient would then sit in a chair uh, that would it, it resembles uh, a massage chair, if you've ever had a massage where you're sitting and you're leaning forward on the machine, on the chair, and, you, and your breast is out there for the surgeon to do her thing about the um, tissue that they want. And they are able to do it under local anesthesia. But since she had wanted me to do it under an OR table, I then had to be wrapped up in a blanket be, and drive myself over to the uh, main hospital, which was about a block and a half to two blocks away. Someone did its walk with me in escort, but I was in a blanket 
with wires hanging out of my breast going to outpatient surgery. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I get to the outpatient uh, surgery, I think it's called day surgery. Uh, and then again I have to go get on a, another gurney <laughs> that is still 24 inches high which I can't transfer to and uh, so there's another uh, round of instructing people how to get me on to the gurney because in the day surgery apparently they don't have a Hoyer lift or they couldn't find one <laughs> so they it's between myself and the two staff they got me on the gurney and then I go into the um, OR room and uh, I get transferred to the OR table and I ask for pillows under my knees to elevate my legs so my back lays flat on the OR table and so they put a couple there and I say I need many many more <laughs> to just be comfortable well I think this is enough and I said no it's not enough <laughs> and so we have a few words there and I get more more pillows. Uh, then the anesthesia person talks to me and says, explains to me that they're going to use uh, an anesthesia that, you know, will put me out very lightly. And I said I was under the impression I was going to have um, local anesthesia. And she said, well, the doctor has ordered. And I said, I think we need to have the doctor in here for this discussion. Well, the doctor came in and we did have a brief discussion. And I did agree to uh, a, low, um, a general anesthesia. But I said I wanted extremely light because I have to be functioning when I get home. And, uh, and there was that agreement there. So... <laughs> I get through that procedure and I get home. I think part of this whole experience has, that rattled me or made me upset and dismayed is that, as I said, I, I was so wanting just to be a, a, a patient, a woman that's come in for the routine mammogram and finding out that there might be some suspicious looking things and I just wanted to be a regular old patient. <laughs> the other part in this whole scenario that bothered me is that I started that whole process in September. It was not until middle December that I learned that fortunately the biopsy came back negative. You know, I don't think in most cases it takes three months for someone to wait to hear or to have a biopsy done and find out the results. There are so many preconceived ideas that the healthcare field has about people with disabilities, you know, what they can tolerate, what they can't do. And oftentimes they don't believe that we know our bodies. <laughs> You know that that uh, they don't give us the respect of knowing our bodies the way we do, and give us the um, credit for uh, having made it thus far in, in living independently, etc. And so they're just gonna do it the easiest for them, so that they can get on to the next thing. I think, you know. There was lack of communication and lack of uh, respect. It was not my place to take care of people. And it was my place to take care of me. And it was their place to take care of me. And it didn't happen. It's essential that people with disabilities be in the creation 
of policies be involved in that creation and have an equal standing in those committees. So include people with disabilities on your committees. Respect, communication. Healthcare stories. Made possible with generous support from the Manuel D. and Rhoda Mayerson Foundation. Mary Smith was interviewed at the Ed Roberts campus, April 2011. For more information, visit the Disability Rights, Education, and Defense Fund website, dreadf.org forward slash healthcare dash stories. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 Unported License.